Man. Derek Chauvin. Oh, yeah. Are you watching it? I've been watching. I've been, of course, the, the cases are, it's long. It's on all day. So I dip in when I can. And Did watch. you watch it? I watched some of it. I've been dipping in and out. Man. So what's on. powerful testimony? What was the testimony that was the most powerful for you? It's two that come to my head right off. One was a young black man that was basically protecting the the rest of the people out there. The MMA fighter? Yeah, him. His name is Donald Williams. Yeah, him and the actual police chief that testified. Um, and it shocked me because I heard him say that Derek Chauvin did use excessive force. And you just don't really see cops going against one another openly like that. So it was just a weird dynamic for me. Um, this is my favorite part of what he said. This the MMA fighter? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I dare you to touch me like that. I swear I'll slap the fucking, the fuck out of both of you. Yeah, I did. I mean to. Right. So again, sir, it's fair to say that you grew angrier and angrier. No, I grew professional and professional. I stayed in my body. Can't me out to be angry. And his face was so tight when he said that. Oh yeah. Like, how did this get to be about me being angry? Because I don't. The defense strategy is like paint these people out that were around to be angry mob of witnesses. Yeah. And they were so angry to the point where Derek Chauvin couldn't even pay attention to how long his knee was on the neck because he was trying to. He was scared. That's, that that's unacceptable. He was scared, and man. the officers that were there, that, that were with him, they were trying. They didn't know he was on the neck either, because they they've been charged too. Let's not forget the other cops. Mm -hmm. Their trial will be at the end of the year. Right. They weren't paying attention to what was going on because they were trying to ward off these angry mob of citizens that came up to the cops. Like that's not what happened. And, and let's let's. Put on record that these are supposed to be trained professionals you know what i'm saying and doing what they do the other one that really 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 she was she was doing too much but i get it <laughs> um genevieve hansen she was the emt that no she was there she came to the scene and she asked them could she help him because she saw he was lifeless she recognizes the signs mm -hmm. and they said she said i'm an emt i want to help the cops were like yeah whatever get out of here mm -hmm. so i know their face was tight when she walked in there with her badge and her uniform right. yes i am a real emt and i was there to help and y'all wouldn't let me all right the other one that made me cry lord have mercy god bless this man charles mcmillan 61 years old third grade education just the neighborhood guy. We got these guys in every neighborhood in the right. country. The guy that you just see at the store all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they part of the community. They there. He actually said five days before this happened, he saw Derek Chauvin. And he said, you know what I'm saying? When you out here in the community and you dealing with these people, make sure they get to go home to their family like you go home to your family. Just a, the, a wise old man. Yeah. Not old, because you know what? <laughs> That's not too long away the, from the me. The elders of the community, you know what I'm You saying. know an elder. Yeah. Okay. He broke down the crying on the stand. Like, first of all, are you guys seeing these new angles and these new videos that you never saw before? I never saw the video. Mm -hmm. When I saw the Derek, um, when I saw the George Floyd video, I saw it on the news. I saw clips. Right. But when I'm it was going around the internet and everybody watched the whole thing, I didn't do it because yeah. I'm 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 I can't. Got to protect yourself, yo. Yeah, I can't. Psyche, yeah. Because yeah. see, see that would like I can't. I can't. But now that they're showing the trial, and actually, you know what we're seeing? They're protecting us. We're seeing some horrible stuff, mm -hmm. but it's worse for them because mm -hmm. they're seeing pictures and details that right. they're hiding from the public. Mm -hmm. And they have to. Well, I once again, people. I think people don't always understand the dynamics of how cases work, also, and how, like, technically, they can't always give you everything. Like, it's always extra that the public doesn't see in some ways until, like, sometimes they know stuff when we know it. Like, just because they want to protect the, the integrity of the case. One of the jurors. This is how bad it is. One of the jurors became ill. She said she's not been sleeping. Mm -hmm. She was about to pass out. 
Um, they had to escort her out so she could take a break. Juror number 44, a white woman in her 50s. She works for a nonprofit organization. She, they asked her if her illness was stress-related. The juror explained she's been having trouble sleeping, and she's been awake since 2 a.m. Mm. So white woman has been realizing some stuff that she can't deny. Yeah. It's just in your face now. I would I mean I I I think it's more I thought it's I think two things. I think she has a heart. It can be that she Absolutely. has a heart and she understands that this shit is that's fucked what up. I mean. Or I think I got to it. going into some movie shit like, oh, this some scripted shit. They didn't pick the juror, they gonna do the mistrial and mm-hmm. you know all Well that no, they well listen, this is that's not it. Because look, she declined medical attention, so she didn't want no attention. She just it's too much. It's a lot. Yeah. She said she felt like she would be okay going forward. The court seated her close to the door for quick bathroom access if she needed to go outside and get some air. Mm-hmm. That was it. They didn't make a big deal out of it. They didn't say, you know, she might not be able to make it. They just said that she's been having a hard time dealing with this. People that are in the courtroom are coming back reporting. At certain times during the trial, they're saying that the jurors put their pens and papers down. Because at this point, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't need to write nothing down. Right. It's, but this, we've not seen the defense yet. That's and that's what I was asking. So that's this week. We're seeing the prosecution. I mean, and then they just kind of like cross-examining. The defense is kind of cross-examining. Right. But now they're going to have witnesses, the, the defense, defense. And they're going to have their, they're going to plead their case. Mm-hmm. And I, we've already I don't, seen. I don't know. From what I see from uh, the defense, if that's the guy, mm-hmm. he's stumbling already. He's horrible. He, yeah, he horrible. <laughs> Where did they get this lawyer? <laughs> It, he might as well have got a public defender like, and saved his money. Yeah, because you can tell, like he, you can tell. I, I see him like getting stumped. Like he's there getting stumped. Like he asked a question, that answered, and then he just pause and kind of like think, like, damn, what should I ask next? Yeah. The MMA fighter when he was asking him, like, that, that's why it was my favorite moment. He, 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 he couldn't handle him at all because he was like, um, did you say, you know, blah blah blah? He was like, did you hear that? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like he's playing mind like games with though. the lawyer. I, I get it, but I ain't like it because it was like you're doing too much. Yeah, Answer the like question you're and being, go. <laughs> it's it's adding to a narrative combative, again, right. like a bigger narrative. You're being combative, and it's just like, oh, this is why this is why we treat y'all like this because but, this, you know, and it's just. But like, I feel like once again, I always come back that people that feel that way about you ain't there. You can do to change how they feel about it. So, like once again, I'm glad that he showed. The, the emotion but i'm also glad like once again he said i was able to stay in my body like i'm a professional fighter if i want to like fuck them up i could no i agree with that it yeah. was just more like mm-hmm. it was more like the sassiness on there yeah. like did you hear that don't you hear but, that it's just like bro let's get this shit out the way mm-hmm. like let's get this a clean we don't yeah. need them having no excuses we mm-hmm. already we outnumbered we mm-hmm. already down it's just like bro let's get this let's get us a fair case a fair uh let's get justice for this like um, yeah. i think i have some audio of charles mcmillan the 61 year old guy i was talking about mm-hmm. let me see if this is it he's crying He really tried to talk. He really tried, y'all. And these people. He stayed the longest. He stayed the longest on the stand. They're not listen. They're not playing what he said. They're really just playing him crying, and that's stupid. But what was the gist of what he said? Um, they showed him. He's one of the people that was standing out there with with mm-hmm. the witnesses. Yeah. And he stayed there until George Floyd was gone. Like, and he mm-hmm. talked to the cop after that. Wow. And he said to Derek Chauvin, he was like, "Remember when I saw you the other day, and I told you let these people go home like you do? Like, you doing too much." Yeah. Basically, the gist of it. Don't quote me, but that was basically the gist of it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Well, that's your opinion. That's what Derek Chauvin said." Yeah. He was like, nah, man, like... But how, but how dynamic is that, that he literally had that conversation with him? That's before? that elder man, wisdom, bro. Whole, that's that whole elder case, wisdom. Like, this whole case, like, for the fact that one of the witnesses was a professional MMA fighter to understand 
different like chokes and all oh, that yeah. to be on the stand like to be a key witness like and then like this older guy mm -hmm. for him to have this interaction with this guy a couple days before like man it's i don't know it's crazy it's right. crazy and, and i think that's why um i won't say i'm happy with the state of the world right now but i'm glad so much is being revealed because like once again just think back in the day when our grandparents and like our elders used to, it, it was no smartphones, it was no cameras, and they would cry and say, cry out saying that this stuff is being done to us, and everybody else just turned their head or like you're exaggerating or this didn't happen. And now we're seeing literally daily almost that these things that they said were going on are actually going on, and there are witnesses there or like we can cooperate these stories, and it just really shows you how America has been on the path of where it is right now for a long time. And it's time for stuff to start being addressed. It's time for things to change. And like, we're gonna have to be the people that speak up and stand in the gap and, and, and make these things happen. Speaking of cops and shit, 